Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and today we're looking at JSON Server. It will allow you to quickly launch a development API that you can work with as you build your front-end applications. I'm at npmjs.com, and here we can search for JSON-Server. I'll press Enter, and you see it as the first result. And when I click that, we get the documentation for JSON Server. But one thing I want to point out, it says to install, use npm i JSON Server. We're not going to do that. We're going to use npx because we don't want to add JSON Server as a dependency in our React application. We just want to launch it and work with it. And npx will allow us to do that instead of installing with npm. Let's bring up Visual Studio Code and get started. Here we go. I have got our grocery list React application open that we've been working on throughout the series. I'm on the app.js file, but that doesn't matter so much right now. In fact, I'm going to bring the source folder back up here so we don't see all the files. I'm going to create a new folder, and I don't want it in the source folder. I just want it in the file tree. I'm going to just call this folder data. And then inside the data folder, I'm going to create a new file named db.json. As you might expect, this file will hold all of the JSON data that we will use for the back end. And I'm just going to paste in some starter data here that we would see for our grocery items list. Now notice some differences compared to when we hard coded in items when we initially started the project. And the main difference to notice is all of the keys are in quotes. That was not the case when we put the JSON right in our JavaScript. And then of course, between each JSON object here is a comma. So let's look at the data then. An integer does not need to be in quotes. A Boolean is not in quotes, but the string that we're using for each item is in quotes. So make sure you have that correct. And then also, it is nested here. This is an array, and it's the items array, and then there's the objects inside of the items array, and items is also inside of quotes, and overall, this is a full JSON object. Now, I'm going to put this source code in GitHub and link to it in the description below, so you could also just copy this out of the GitHub source code if you go to that link. All right, I'm going to save this file, and I'm going to open a terminal window, and we would want to use a different terminal window than we run our React application in. And you can easily do that by pressing the plus over here beside where you see the word bash, and you can start another terminal window. So I haven't launched the React application, but I would do that in a separate terminal window as well. Here I'm going to type npx, not npm, but npx, and then I'll type json-server, and then dash P, and that stands for port, and I'm going to put 3500, and then I'm going to put dash W, which stands for watch, and then type data slash DB dot JSON. And it will take it just a minute, but the server will launch. And now the server has launched, and we can see some messages here. I'm going to expand the terminal window and scroll just a little bit. It's giving us some addresses for the resources already. So we can see it's running at port 3500 on local host. And to get our data, we would go to the items path. So I'll just go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to resize the window here and then pull up just a blank Chrome window. And I'll type this address right into Chrome and press Enter. And now we get our JSON right here inside the browser. I'm going to go ahead and resize Chrome as well. And so we can see both things here in the window. I'll pull this one down. There we go, pull this over. And let's take a look. When a request comes in now here in the terminal, we see it was a get request and it requested items. The response code was 200. And it even gives us the milliseconds it took to return that request. So let's go ahead and refresh. And we should see another get there. I had to scroll the window just a little, but another get request came in for items. Let's do it again. Looks like there's a little bug right now where I'm having to scroll the window to see the next request come in. Let's try it a little smaller and hit, there we go. Now we're just seeing it without me scrolling. 
But each time we request that resource, we can see it logged to the window where we have JSON server launched. And that's really almost all there is to the JSON server that we will need for our project. I'm going to open another bash window like I talked about. And here, I'll just paste in that resource again. Now, this is the address that we will request all items from, and that would be a GET request. But we could also send a POST request to this same address here at the slash items to post a new item. But when we want to update an item, we're going to include a slash and whatever the ID is. Say if it was POST number one, we would have the number one there. And likewise, when we delete, we would also have the ID because we would want to delete that. Now those are different types of requests also. So you could have a GET request, a POST request, when we update an item, we're actually going to send a patch request, and then a delete item is called a delete request. Okay, we're going to take all of this and move forward in the project. In the next tutorial, we'll be working once again with use effect, but then also with async fetch requests to do these exact CRUD operations, that is create, read, update, and delete. Hey, thank you guys so much for liking the video if it helped you get started with React. Also, I appreciate you watching and subscribing. It's helping my channel grow. Take care, and I'll see you again very soon.